Mr. S Mr. Palmer here. Uh, another video on computer science. Okay, so before you continue with this video, make sure you've gone through your notes on low level languages and translators and assemblers. All right, so this one's about code generation, talking about lexical and syntax analysis. So, the big question for this video are how are lexical and syntax analysis performed? So, if you think back to um, the whole purpose of translators, okay, on the left hand side, we've got the most abstract form where we're writing uh, in a natural language almost and this obviously needs to be translated into something that the computer can understand on the right hand side in ones and zeros so um, before we go any further I'm just going to talk about parsing where parsing is where you actually break down a statement into its constituent parts so you take a sentence and you break it down into small parts that actually then um, construe some kind of meaning from it okay so the stages of compilation are basically lexical analysis syntax analysis then you go into code generation and optimization okay and I'm dealing with the first two in this video they're all about passing uh, code in order to extract meaning from it so that you can generate some form of machine code so here's some code alright um, this is for some uh, random computer game uh, where you're controlling a rocket okay so there's some kind of basic engine there for making the rocket move okay so in here I've got comments, I've got indentation, I've got spacing. This is all great because it makes it easy for me to understand uh, it's, you know, so I can pass my code to someone else and they can look at it and blah 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 alright but it's not really that great when we're talking about the computer okay these are all what we call redundancies so lexical analysis basically is about reduce, removing the redundancies uh, you're modifying the source code to translate into st a string of characters so that can then be passed on to the next stage okay that's the whole purpose of lexical analysis um, using Alexa, you pass your uh, source code, all right, in order to translate it into um, some uh, into uh, um, into uh, a form that uh, can then be analyzed for syntax to check that it matches the rules of the language. Okay, so the whole this the use of Alexa basically allows program uh, programmer flexibility in laying out their code. All right. The steps of lexical analysis are number one, you identify the lexemes and you associate them with tokens. Lexemes are the basic units of a language, right? So the examples would be reserved words, operators, identifiers, um, which can relate, you know, call subroutines or methods, uh, procedures, functions, whatever you want to call them in whatever language you're using. Uh, variables, constants, literals, for example, string literals. Okay, so these would be the basic units that are making up um, an instruction in uh, or sorry a line of code in your source code all right and then the second thing that happens in lexical analysis is that identifiers are replaced by pointers to positions in the symbol table and I'm going to talk about a symbol table later on so well, I'm going to use this example of line of a line of code uh, in Java uh, later on uh, sorry throughout through this video okay so if V speed is smaller than 15 and the boost and boost I'm assuming boost is a boolean here okay because it can be true or false that would make this uh, line of code make sense then blah 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 okay so this is the line of code that I'm working with so le uh, Lexa, the Lexa, so lexical analysis allows us to pick up uh, syntax elements to begin with because um, during the process of, um, of running through the Lexa it will need to match a keyword to a keyword in its keyword table, reserve word table okay and if um, if has been replaced by off or pif or whatever it is it won't be able to match it and therefore it will be able to flag up a syntax error okay now tokens um, basically you're taking one of your lexemes and you're assigning a binary code to each token right so these will be predefined by the um, the, uh, the 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 program you know the, the standard for the programming language that you're using okay so for example there, there will be set values for reserved words in a language and then as I mentioned earlier identifiers and constants are given a code and replaced with a pointer to a symbol table now any other symbols for example parentheses uh, so squiggly brackets round brackets square brackets uh, multiplication symbol addition symbol they would re retain their ASCII value probably okay it depends on the um, particular translator that you're using alright so these are some example tokens in my hypothetical language okay so if is being given a value of 256 do is being given a value of 257 while is 258 so on and so forth my variables and constants have got token values of 512 and 513 so my 
bear in mind that these would be you know I'll be replacing them with binary not with the deanery numbers that you can see in front of you so the uh, uh, no, sorry before I show you the example line of code again I'm just going to explain what a symbol table is so it's a data structure where you store details of all the identifiers that you use in a program uh, and it will basically hold the name the date the type so whether it's an integer um, a real number a flow a double you know or whatever it is and the memory location that you're going to allocate to it you might not know the memory location yet that might come later on okay but they will start to to create the symbol table now so in my example okay in the left hand corner you can see the uh, the tokens that I showed you earlier I'm going to go I'm going to pass parse my uh, line of code and I'm going to replace those uh, lexemes with the tokens okay out of my token table so you can see that my brackets my um, comparison operator they've all got the equivalent ASCII value okay uh, 512 should be a space there 512786 refers to the um, 512 being a variable okay uh, and 786 being the a pointer to the symbol table and again uh, you can see my constant 15 has been replaced by 513 with the value of the constant okay in this case because it's such a small number and it might not be being referred to elsewhere then um, it might be worth just hard coding the value into the um, instruction okay you should be able to cross reference that with when you were learning about assembler and what what happens there and then it will remove all of the spaces not necessary uh, for the computer to understand what's going on in there all right once that's been done okay the lexical analysis has been performed uh, the syntax analysis takes place you break the program down so the program is broken down into blocks blocks are broken down to the statements statements are broken down into um, the the instruction words the reserve words the variables the constants the operators etc etc um, the symbol table was built uh, completely and then uh, the validity of instructions is checked so for example we can know by the grammar that's been defined by the language that x equals a plus b is a valid um, form for an expression and so if someone has written a plus b equals x then that will be flagged up as an error okay uh, so this you know this you can think about bnf here and how does bnf relate to um, to the syntax analysis stage so uh, those are the two stages of compilation that have been covered here okay once lexical analysis has been performed uh, so you have uh, broken down the um, the uh, instructions replaced the removed all the redundant uh, information out of there and then replaced the lexemes with tokens yeah syntax analysis is taking place to make sure that the so the program is broken down check that it meets the rules of the language and then it can be the the resultant um, uh, uh, program can be passed on for into the code generation phase all right and so that those are the big questions uh, for this video and then watch out for the next one about uh, code generation optimization thank you very much